Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, more faculty apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin, and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today I'd like to talk about some more faculty apps. Actually, I want to talk about how I use the the iPad in my classroom when I teach here at UNL. And I want to start with something really simple. So at the beginning of the year, all of the students show up into our classes. And I really would like to remember everybody's name. And I work rather hard at it, maybe because it's so hard for me. And the first thing I do is I make everybody make a name tent out of paper. But what I ask then is for one of the students to grab my iPad and just take a picture. So I just use a, the I just go to the camera function, I give it to them, and they take a picture of all of the students in their, uh, in their seats or standing up, however they want, with their name. So now I have everybody's photo and their name attached to it so I can immediately learn their names and more than that in the future if I need to write uh, recommendation letters or to remember to interact and remember which one is which, because often I have repeating names, that's a great way to make sure that you're there. And I'll give you an example. I'll go into my photos, and I'll try not to uh, include too many. But you can see this is my, one of my current classes. Each one of the students has the name right in front of them. And that way, I can remember them, practice them, and know. Um, another thing that you can do then is you can actually share, create a stream and then share it if you have TAs that are teaching in the class or other instructors with the same students. We teach in a block so I actually have two other instructors with the same exact list of students. This is a way we can all share the same group of photos and have access to that information. So that's just using the camera inside uh, the basic apps of the iPad. The next thing I want to talk about, which I use quite often, is Socrative. And Socrative is an e-clicker system. There are a few of them out there. Socrative has been around for quite a while, and I think they have been most consistent in producing a product that we can all use and, uh, and works consistently. They've just recently upgraded it, so there are new features. It looks nicer, but at the heart of it, it's still just a great app. So I'll go to Socrative. And one of the things I like about Socrative that is very important is that uh, Socrative has apps on the iPad and the iPhone. So I'm actually using the iPhone to play also the role of a student in the class. But the great thing about Socrative is actually it works across devices. So Android phones, um, it'll work with uh, Microsoft phones, it'll work with uh, computers of any kind, so you can log in online. That means that you can use it as a bring your own device in the college classroom. That's very common. We actually have iPads or at least um, tablets required of our students, so it gets easier. When I use Socrative, therefore, I can actually have all of my students on the same device as a similar device, but it works as I said, across all devices. So you can have whatever your students bring, as long as they have a device, they can actually log into Socrative. And they don't necessarily have to have an identity on Socrative. They can just log in, but knowing what your room number is. So anybody clicking on this room number while I'm on it will be able to participate in the activity that I have. And actually, Socrative, if we go back into it, Socrative has a few different activities. So this is what uh, the, it looks on the teacher's side. This is the question I just posted. And this is what is called instructor paste or teacher paste uh, quiz. And that means that it waits for all of the students to log in and to answer before you move on once you have all the responses from students, or once you decide that there's enough of them, and you can see it says how many students are logged in. Right now, just one, and how many students answered. So right now, I'm going on my phone as the student and putting in an answer. I'm just putting it. This is the, and this, this question is actually an open-ended question that requires a text response. 
uh, and that's great. You can also do true false, you can do multiple choice items depending on the kind of things you're teaching. What I love about this is actually that you can use text as well. So we completed and now you can see that it says that one out of one students answered and then I can go to show answers. So this is the answer I just had and you can have obviously if more students will answer if you had a hundred students in here you will see all hundred and if it take it took more than one page you would just scroll down to get the rest of them if you press next you get the next question and the question after that so you can move at a teacher pace showing the responses this is great if you're doing this kind of Q&A and trying to keep your students really on the ball and making sure they're engaged during class. If you're using it as a quiz, it's often better to do it as student-paced quiz. And that means that the students are taking and moving windows ahead without the instructor having to move it for them, which means that some students can be faster and therefore get through quicker. And some students will be slower and they will have enough time to complete the quiz. Um, now, you can get reports and you can see that you can get a report on the student responses on email, you can look at the chart, you can save it for later, or you can download or uh, submit it to Google Drive. So there's lots of options for you to keep the information. So if you're actually using it for a quiz or just to measure student engagement throughout, you will have evidence as you go forward. So this one is uh, Socrative, and I just want to show you this is what the main page looks like and in the main page you can see that you can do a few things. You can start a quiz. One of my favorites is a quick question. In a quick question what you ask is you go in front of the class and you just ask an oral question that you just came up with right now. It doesn't have to be something you prepared in advance like a quiz. It's actually something that you want to just get a measure of your audience in real time. So you're saying what kind of questions do I want? True, false, multiple choice or or short answer and I say true or false and here is the question and all you're getting in real time is how many people logged in and how many of them said true, how many of them said false which can serve as a way to move discussion ahead or to even see if they're feeling that they've gotten everything they need out of a topic and they want to move on, things like that. Another way, so I'm finishing this one, another way is an exit ticket so they've programmed an exit ticket to uh, the class and if you log in and go into this room so I'll plug in my name and now I'm a student you have a few questions the first question is how well did you understand today's material and I totally got it today and I submit it the minute I submitted it the instructor sees that that's my response and you have individual students and then you would have a class total here there's only one student so class total is not very relevant and then there's a, a question about what you learned so this is a text answer and that can be submitted very good ways to use Socrative in the classroom it works very well for large classrooms so if you have a classrooms of over 30 or 40 students that's a quick way to engage with all of your students get them involved regardless of what device they actually uh, use and um, one more thing that I want to share with you is the ability to create short movies that explain different topics. There are different apps that do that. The very basic one is EduCreations. EduCreations uh, helps you very quickly create a short movie with a whiteboard basis. But uh, while I like that one and what I love about it is that it's simple, uh, I'd actually like to talk about an app called Explain Everything. Now, EduCreations is a free app, Explain Everything is not. But Explain Everything has some features that I really uh, like. So if you go into Explain Everything, you can choose a color template. And again, it is not free, but it is a few dollars, and that's uh, worth it. What you can see is you have a whiteboard, and in that whiteboard, you can do whatever you want as you explain something. So you can use it just to draw or to make equations or to write you can use a text tool so I get a text box and I can write inside that text box or 
I can add, so I can bring in a movie, I can bring in a photo, you can see I can also bring in documents from different places, so I can embed a lot of objects into it while I'm making my explanation, and that's very useful. The other thing that I like about uh, Explain Everything is the fact that it can export, and so if we look into the into exporting, so we give the project a name, and when we go to export to, you can see that you have multiple options. So you can export it to iTunes, which means you connect it if you have, for example, a course on Apple, uh, on Apple's uh, iTunes U, or you can use Dropbox, Evernote, Google Drive, so these are different ways to share that information with students. You can also, if you see here, use a Box, OneDrive, even Yuku, and a different, uh, and YouTube, so you can actually have it go to multiple locations. Uh, the difference between Explain Everything in this and other apps that do something similar, for example, TouchCast or EduCreations that I just mentioned, is that you can export it beyond the world of the app. So when you create something in EduCreations, it stayed there. When you create something and Explain Everything, it actually is transportable and you maintain a, more control over it even if the app itself disappears at one point or another or changes in some significant ways, you have access to your videos in different formats. So today I talked about a few things I use in my classroom to help me teach. I talked about using the camera just to learn students' names and to have a record of who they are. I talked about having explain everything to share vi short instructional videos uh, with your students. And I talked about using Socrative for a dynamic system, clicker system in the classroom. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.